moment. There we go. Now we're recording. Um, so uh, as always, uh, I'm recording, uh, and you should see on the screen our uh, our agenda for for the for the hour. Um, and uh, to sort of kick things off, here's our antitrust slide. So please review that. Uh, and the upshot, of course, is it's all about being a good person. So uh, and if you need to dig into that a little bit more, feel free to do so. Um, what, I, what I'll ask is uh, if someone might uh, take notes for the hour, uh, and these are just simply high-level notes of things that we think are generally important. Oh, and I, I hear crickets here. So I know Wendy's done this before. I believe Jeff has taken notes before. So they're off the hook. Nobody? I'm, Am I gonna, I'm gonna have to pick I'm somebody? driving. I'm driving. Okay, Ken, you're off the hook. <laughs> Who else is, is driving, otherwise flying, conducting heavy uh, vehicles? Well, I, I would I would volunteer, put my hand up. Uh, I can do it for the first 45 minutes after that. Uh, All right, you, you got it, Stephen. Thank you so much. <laughs> How's that for an easy sell? All right, uh, and just, just very, very high level topical. Uh, and then shoot, shoot me an email at the end of the hour uh, or whenever you're back in, in, in office. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, and I do know we have at least one new person on the call this morning. Um, I'm just doing a quick scan of the list here. And yeah, and so I think uh, Alicia is, is our sort of our new member uh, today. Uh, often we have uh, new members on the call and so sure enough, uh, today would be an example. Uh, Alicia, you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Alicia. Uh, my background is um, nursing, uh, but I have um, done a lot of different things in healthcare from working with employers, um, hospitals, um, billing. Um, so I have a really good picture about everything, um, occupational health. Uh, so I've always been interested in technology and I've always been interested in entrepreneurship. Um, so right now I'm volunteering with a nonprofit here in Seattle um, that is called Seattle Health Innovators. And the function of this group is a nonprofit helping startups uh, understand the healthcare system. And I'm volunteering for that right now. Uh, so I participate and I go to a lot of the conferences that have to do with and try to get involved in anything that has to do with healthcare and improving the system. Yeah, and, and uh, Alicia and I have uh, worked together through Seattle Health Innovators and her real interest uh, and skill is in the payer space. And I mentioned that because uh, Ravish is on the call and Ravish happens to, to lead our, uh, our payer subgroup. And so, um, uh, Ravish, you may have a potential uh, new uh, member uh, to, to work with. And so, uh, Ravish will go through uh, updates for the payer subgroup in, in a little while. And again, thanks, Alicia, for joining us uh, this morning. And great to have you on the call. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, Louis. Alicia, what was, the, what was the name of the nonprofit again? Oh, and she muted, but I could I can cover for her, and it's Seattle Health Innovators. All right. Okay, uh, and again, thanks thanks Alicia for for uh, for joining us on the call. Okay, um, anyone else uh, on on the call that's new or would just like to introduce yourself as we as we move forward? Alrighty. Oh, well, I just oh. joined. Uh, oh, good morning, see, Patricia. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't see my name on the list, but uh, but I know I'm, I'm in the meeting. <laughs> yes, and, you're here. Um, so, <laughs> good morning. Okay. Morning. Um, sorry for joining a little bit late. Uh, yeah, so I do have a, a, a blockchain for digital health company, and I've been meeting, uh, joining some of these meetings on and off. I'm a little bit under the weather today, so I will not talk a lot, but uh, I'll try to participate in it in any, any way I can. Um, so we're basically working on um, using the blockchain to store both identity and medical records. And we are working with uh, local universities here in Miami to uh, write a grant proposal 
for um, a specific use case that involves uh, telemedicine and antibiotic resistance. Excellent, outstanding. And and uh, Patricia, uh, I was on a uh, an interesting uh, webinar. I think it was either yesterday or the day before, and there was a gentleman from UC Davis uh, that was on the call, and he's doing something very similar to what we're doing here in Seattle, which sounds very similar to what you're doing down in Miami. Uh, and oh. what I'll what I'll do is uh, I will uh, forward you the link to that presentation, and uh, and you can okay. Sort of parse that and decide whether that sounds interesting to you. And I'm due to follow up with this gentleman. Uh, gosh, his name ex escapes me now. I believe it's Michael something. Uh, but he's out of UC D mm -hmm. Davis down in California. So I, I'll just make a note to myself Wonderful. here. Yeah. Um, okay. Wonderful. So uh, UC Davis. And yeah, and I'll send you the link to that presentation. It was an excellent presentation. It was on uh, blockchain in the healthcare space. And one of our local folks here in Seattle, David Holding from Microsoft spoke. And of course, uh, David uh, spoke here with this group uh, a couple of months ago. And he's a great speaker, very well understanding of blockchain technology in healthcare. And, uh, and he's, he's a great resource for us to have here in the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, perfect. Uh, alrighty, so moving on. So uh, community announcements. Um, so I was contacted uh, by Hepper Ledger Leadership, I think it was yesterday, maybe to before. Uh, we are, uh, uh, they are planning for the HIMSS 2020 conference, which is happening uh, next year, March. Uh, if you might recall, uh, Hyperledger um, and the healthcare uh, SIG particularly are represented at the HIMSS conference. And that was, we started that two, about two years ago. Uh, and most recently, uh, myself and then Dennis Kozen uh, were, were at the HIMSS conference this year. Uh, I was representing the Hyperledger group, uh, and it was phenomenal because this year was really the first year that we got an awful lot of traction in, uh, in the blockchain technology space in healthcare, uh, in large measure because two years ago was really the first time anyone at the conference even knew about blockchain. I think it really has, hadn't entered into the lexicon at that time. Uh, and so uh, we're planning early this time around because what we're really looking to do is develop uh, a little, uh, what I would call a more robust approach to, um, to having Hyperledger represented in the healthcare space. And uh, the idea would be to, to perhaps develop a panel so we could have panel discussion at the HIMSS conference next year. Um, and so what we're, what we're asking uh, membership, uh, and I'm, I probably will also send this out as a, in a separate e email to the full, uh, the full HC SIG membership as well. But what we're looking for are, are people who would have an interest in speaking uh, about uh, their experiences of using blockchain technologies in the healthcare space at the conference. Uh, and again, the, the thinking is, and, the, and this is very, very high level thinking at the moment, uh, whether we have a panel discussion, whether we have separate presentations, whether we do this in a, in a forum. Uh, at the last HIMSS conference, we had basically it was a full day event that was immediately preceding the conference where it was all about blockchain. Uh, and I, can, I, know, I know Dennis uh, and I uh, participated in that. Um, and it was very good. Um, and so we we're looking to try, to try to reprise that again this year. Um, if you happen to be interested, uh, let me know. Uh, either send me an email or contact me over on Rocket Chat, and I will uh, put your name on the list, and, and we will start to, to sort of convene meetings uh, through the leadership team uh, to, to, to think about how to develop uh, this, this, this idea of having a more robust uh, presence uh, of Hyperledger uh, at the, uh, the HIMSS conference. Um, uh, right now, the, the, what they're asking for is a, a deadline uh, for proposals in mid-July. Um, that's what I, that's what I'm being told, and honestly, I think that's a little bit premature. But that's that's what that's what I have up there right now. So that's kind of the the the, the time frame we're looking at. Uh, again, I think that's you know just personally me. I think that's a little bit a little bit too soon. But um, so anyway, so anyone happen to be offhand uh, interested in this? It's a great opportunity. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Since, since Tara might be. <laughs> okay. Uh, so so uh, so Ken, are are you 
did, are you part of Centera? Oh, and we just uh, lost. Yeah, no, I am. Okay, and I think, you know, and, and the reason why I asked is I think Centera was represented at the, the webinar uh, two days ago. So I, for, yeah. I'm just wrecking my brain on that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and <laughs> also, also, also at the last, uh, at the last hymns, my CISO was up on the panel. Oh, and, and I think it was Mike CISO that was at the webinar. So his name is okay. very familiar. Oh, good. Yeah. A small world. All right. Yep. <laughs> it's all connected. And, and I thought I might have heard someone else uh, comment. Which, this is Ravish. I will get in touch with you. Okay. Oh, perfect. All right. Thank you, Ravish. Good, good, good. Okay, moving on. Uh, so just last night, just yesterday, uh, the Hyperledger team announced Hyperledger Transact. Uh, and uh, that it's, a, it's effectively a smart contract engine. Uh, I've posted the, uh, the, the sort of the, uh, the, uh, the announcement here. Uh, and I wanted to just pass it along to, to the group um, uh, this morning only because it's a, it's a brand new thing brand new uh, tool. It's, uh, it's really uh, another suite of tools that we would use uh, for, for developing uh, blockchain solutions. Uh, the purpose of Transact will be to develop really sort of an abstract smart contracts, what they're calling smart contracts engine. Uh, and that will allow us to run uh, sort of uh, ag agnostic uh, against the, uh, the, the uh, blockchain DLT. Um, and uh, what's really interesting about this is uh, the excitement is really sort of cycling around the notion that it, it'll run uh, across EVM, it'll run across, you know, disparate DLTs. And so it just got announced yesterday. I wanted to pass that along. Um, and uh, just for those of us that uh, tend to focus on the, the more technical stuff, this is a great uh, tool. And uh, what I'm seeing, uh, and this is just sort of my personal take on it is, uh, more recent Hyperledger uh, tools and frameworks are tending to be more sensitive to frameworks outside of sort of the Hyperledger greenhouse, which is phenomenal. And that really includes Ethereum, uh, as Ethereum is probably the, the, the other large uh, uh, DLT uh, uh, framework that's out there. So... Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And uh, if you'd like to have someone speak on uh, Hyperledger Transact here uh, within the healthcare con uh, context, please let me know and I could uh, probably set something up. Okay, and then uh, as, as many of you know, we've had for, uh, for a number of months, uh, Michelle and Apolline uh, from Cambridge, uh, they've been developing a, a global blockchain uh, benchmarking study uh, and uh, they contacted me, uh, I want to say about a week ago, to let me know that they have now completed their work, and they're now in the process of completing their report, uh, which is going to be a, a phenomenal report, uh, and it's really focused around uh, production-level blockchain solutions in healthcare, and that paper that they're developing will be done, they believe, probably end of July, uh, and so we're hoping that uh, Michelle uh, will uh, be joining us and he'll be presenting on the work that that he and his team have done over the past oh gosh it's been probably about three or four or five months so I wanted to let everyone know that uh, thanks for for your participation if you uh, happen to have a production level blockchain solution in healthcare uh, up and running uh, and uh, that effort that work effort uh, is is finally coming together um, so uh, where we have fingers crossed that we'll, we'll get some feedback from Michelle after they get their paper out and uh, they'll be presenting, uh, again, my guess would be August, uh, probably August timeframe or so. Okay, any, anyone else have any other community announcements that they'd like to mention, things that they're doing in their community that are in any way related to blockchain technologies in healthcare? Hey, uh, Rich, this is Ravish. I just wanted to quickly announce, um, hopefully I'll, uh, bring up the meetup, uh, probably will send the information out over the weekend. Uh, we did get uh, agreement one um, from uh, Maryland Center for Entrepreneurship um, and approval from the Harvard County Economic Development Authority for the event sponsorship uh, regarding Hyperledger local event. So I also reached out to David and we got the uh, Maryland uh, Hyperledger meetup group started, and the first event will be that event 
happening on July 18th from 9 to 11:30. I will share it with anyone who is in in Maryland or in around Maryland can join over the phone. I will see if there is arrangement in their facilities to open up for a call. Um, I don't know yet, but if that happens, we will definitely open it up uh, on the call as well. But nonetheless, the idea is to bring um, you know a bunch of community from high value perspective in person there, and I'm, I've already talked to them. If we can do it every other month, um, they have agreed to it. So it's just a matter of working dates. But that's something that um, uh, is going to be happening, and I will send out the agenda. I will send out. Um, there are two sections that I'm uh, planning to cover. One is going to be the general blockchain discussion and hyperledger, um, and second is going to be focused on from payer perspective. Already working with one of the IDC consultant who has, um, you know, published a paper around a bunch of use cases in blockchain and uh, healthcare blockchain. So I'm I'm going to be exploring for him to come over there. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the overall uh, from community perspective, those are the two areas that we will be having discussions about. Um, I have been able to arrange the um, a little bit of uh, funding from um, you know one of the organizations who can bring in the breakfast. So I think uh, so July 18th is happening, and I will. Uh, I literally got that confirmation um, a day. Um, I think it was Wednesday um, uh, when they finally approved it and. You know, David created the group quickly, and we are going to be sending out the invites. So, just Excellent. wanted to, uh, everyone to know about. Excellent. Well, well, good. Good to hear, Ravish. Tell me again where where this is being held at. Uh, this is going to be in Columbia, Maryland, um, at Maryland Center for Entrepreneurship. They have a facility which is the Gateway Innovation Center. I will send out details uh, with the agenda, with the location, and everything, and. Um, you know, you can share it with the with the uh, subgroup. I mean, the, the whole uh, healthcare group. Excellent. And yeah. Actually, and actually, uh, in fact, the healthcare community, not just the first half is going to be uh, general, and second is going to be payer focused. I am reaching out to local payers, um, you know, leaders who can, you know, come come to the event and have a real discussion. Excellent. Yeah, and if you could add that, uh, post your announcement over to the Rocket Chat channel as well. Uh, and, and that will be uh, helpful for, for, for folks uh, that are on yes. uh, Rocket Chat. Perfect. Excellent. Sorry. Thank you, Thank you Ravish. Where was that? Uh, I'm in Columbia, Columbia. Columbia, Maryland. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and, and Ravish, um, when will you know whether this uh, is, we can do call-ins to that for those of us that are not in, on the East Coast? Hopefully Monday I will um, uh, I'll definitely talk to them by Monday and update everyone um, if the call-in go is going to be available or not. I am hoping to make it happen, so we'll see. Outstanding. Well, good, uh, and and best of luck uh, with with your uh, sort of your kickoff event. That sounds very exciting. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, any other community announcements? All righty. Uh, so let's uh, move over to our subgroup updates. Uh, Dennis, did you want to talk a little bit about uh, the patient subgroup? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, if someone has doubts about global warming, he should come now to Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. I've, heard, I've heard it's quite warm. <laughs> this is, today is the biggest update for all of us in Switzerland. It's 48 centigrade. I don't know which, uh, what is in Fahrenheit. Anyway. Oh wow, that is that is warm. Are are the Alps are the Alps officially melting at this point? Yeah, m m many uh, says today that they cannot work uh, under that circumstances. Anyway, it's a very Swiss <laughs> way of where, <laughs> working. Where is where is Switzerland? Uh, in Europe. No, I know, but where in Switzerland? Um, where in Switzerland is uh, in. French part of Switzerland, but no, I know. Uh, where where are you though? Uh, I am next to Weve. Do you know Weve, Montreux? No, I I'll be going to Switzerland in in uh, September, mid September. It's it's better time than today. It's it's great. So uh, yeah, uh, I hope uh, if you have any uh, questions or you need support, just let me know. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we had a great meeting last week, and it is wonderful that also Patricia is participating today. Um, there were uh, some responses, few responses from the from the uh, last meetings, and we decided to go with the patient data for clinical trials on blockchain, and uh, the. The, the, the using the EHR and uh, we compliant with GDPR and uh, it was also a great discussion all together with uh, Fabian, Patricia and Florence Hudson uh, which was uh, first time in our group and she brought also uh, very uh, valuable uh, information from other committees like uh, the IEE pre-standards work in blockchain for healthcare. They are developing a uh, standard and also from PHUs. And uh, his, uh, her strong uh, intention is also uh, building a collaboration between the groups. And uh, I think it's, it's also very useful uh, for many of us to, to communicate and uh, find out the uh, value added uh, share of knowledge uh, in order to uh, proceed uh, with with a project with a use case and my main intention was last week uh, to narrow this proposal uh, patient data clinical trials and blockchain to a more specific uh, requirement uh, in order to define it together and also try to develop it together and we have been speaking, uh, speaking about the uh, uh, interfaces between the data and the blockchain, hyperledger and the structure and the architecture, and mainly uh, how do we, in which part we put the patient data. And uh, we have been discussing and we have, uh, we also decided to uh, uh, think about it till the next meeting in order to make it more uh, concrete. Um, Patricia, will you, will you also uh, like to add from your side, if I'm missing something? Hi, Denise. Uh, well, um, I, I think you, um, you gave a good summary of the last uh, meeting. Yeah. And uh, we actually looked at different proposals that so we all agreed on, on the clinical trial one. Uh, what we are basically we have we, ha we have an assignment for next time in which we studied the, the different aspects of clinical trial and we had to focus on one because there there are many different aspects so uh, each one of us is looking into how uh, we could work together maybe obviously some kind of open source solution that would uh, help each of us in our respective uh, you know projects so we're still, we're, I'm still looking at that. So yeah. that's where we left off, yeah. Wonderful. And uh, Patrice also uh, supporting really uh, with, with her uh, deep knowledge. It's, it's very much uh, appreciated. And uh, we are looking to next week to make it more uh, specified and more uh, building a block of the standardization uh, of uh, data and the process uh, and I think my personal uh, opinion or my personal experience is keeping the data uh, before the uh, hyperledger before the execution of the process together and we are discussing that at the moment so this is a brief summary from our sites Excellent. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, sounds like it's coming together very nicely. And, I'm, and again, I'm very glad uh, that, that you're, you've taken over this group because uh, I'm start starting to see good momentum uh, and, and a good cadence building up. So thank you so much for that. And thank you, Patricia, as well, for participating. Excellent. Uh, exactly. It's very, good very points. exciting. Yeah. Um, the team support was great and uh, we will do it together uh, as a team. It's, it's Excellent. A great team. And your next, uh, your next meeting? is when next week friday perfect so uh so, so patient subgroup meets really actually opposite of of this group 
uh, plus one one hour, if I recall, uh, or, or two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Yes, two hours. Okay. And uh, anybody in the group uh, is are, is very much welcome to participate. And as we are just in the initiation phase, uh, we can we can uh, we can do it together and uh, look into the uh, next meetings uh, for the uh, more uh, effective uh, work together. Outstanding. Very, very exciting time. Thanks again, Dennis. Okay, Ravish, you want to give us an update on the payer subgroup? Sure. So, um, Rich, unfortunately, this week we were not able to meet. We meet every other Tuesdays now, um, same week as this meeting, uh, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, uh, and unfortunately, we were not able to meet this week. I had something come up um, and had to cancel the meeting today. Oh, on this week. However, we are working on, on you know two things. Um, I know we've been working on that paper, and you know it comes on and off. But one of the things that I am uh, really focused on is start working on the use cases and POCs. That's some, that's that's one of the main reason I am also organizing that physical event going forward to ensure that we have um, engagement. Um, because a number of times, what I find, I have at least observed um, is um, you know, discussions are great, but something physical being done and uh, some tangible deliverables um, really catch up uh, the momentum. So that <laughs> yes. being said, I know Jeff, <laughs> that being said, Jeff um, has been um, a regular attendee and, and Satrupa and some of the folks. I We did realize last time that there was some confusion. I think we were meeting earlier weekly and the meeting was on for weekly calendar, but uh, the meeting was happening every other. So uh, I reached out back to the um, the person who sent the invite and requested them to update the event on the calendar. So it just reflects. Uh, I, I suspect the attendance went down because people might have been calling uh, the week when the meeting was not on and it might have you know caused some confusion. So just trying to reset the attendance and the the schedule, um, and um, that's that's what is going on. Okay. Uh, Do you have anything you. anything you have to add, Jeff? Did you want to add to that? And Jeff Jeff is appears to be muted at the moment, and maybe having taking a sip of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, so thanks, Ravish, for that, uh, and and glad to hear that you uh, were able to get the uh, the schedule, uh, the calendar updated. Uh, and I think, it, yeah, I think uh, it's probably easier to manage every every other week rather than weekly, uh, just just from an overhead perspective. Uh, as yep. well, uh, I I wonder if we wait, if if you'd be interested in, uh, we can probably do a uh, put together sort of a description of what you what you guys are currently doing through the pair subgroup. And we can generally uh, generate an email out to full membership, just to let uh, let people know about your new schedule. Uh, and then for those that are interested in participating, to get on that schedule rather than on the weekly schedule, because you may, as you point out, you may have uh, lost some members if they thought that the the uh, subgroup uh, was had, had been uh, uh, disbanded uh, if you had mm -hmm. moved to biweekly and you were still on the weekly calendar. So. Uh, let me know uh, if you want to go that route, and I'd be happy to to help facilitate that. I think that would be a good idea, Eric. So if you can just share that communication, that would be fabulous. Sure. Uh, send me sort of a, a paragraph or two. I'll send you on, something. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, and then we can get that out to membership. Fantastic. Thank you, Ravish. Okay, Thank Stephen, you you, you want to talk about the the healthcare interoperability subgroup? <laughs> So not much has been done. Um, given Rich's gentle urgings, I will uh, complete uh, some work over the weekend to provide a kickoff letter and continue work on uh, an initial agenda and commit to getting this, uh, the interoperability subgroup uh, started sometime this July. I apologize for <clears throat> my my lack of agenda and my lack of time. Uh, it has opened up 
Uh, so now I'm just struggling with uh, finding the same momentum that led us into this uh, initial initial thinking about the subgroup. So uh, I, I, I hope to regain that uh, momentum pretty quickly and then take Rich's advice and just kick things off and see how, see how it begins to roll. Well, thanks for that, Stephen. And I mean, uh, the, the, the reality is uh, this is a really great space, uh, I think, for us to be in. Um, interoperability in, in the healthcare space is a, is a big issue. Uh, I think we all kind of know that. And uh, with, with your guidance and your sort of expertise in the area, I think this is going to be a very, very high growth and high visibility area. Um, and we've already heard uh, from at least uh, one speaker, and I'm thinking of Brian from uh, Instamed, uh, and they've, they've done integrations using Fire. Uh, and uh, I was at a conference, well, actually, Alicia and I were both at a conference about, oh gosh, I think it was about a week or so ago. And, you know, and it was about interoperability in healthcare, you know, it was all about fire. Uh, and so clearly, interoperability continues to be an issue. And it'd be great uh, to have you and your subgroup sort of, you know, sort of kind of convene around some of the use cases as they relate to interoperability. Uh, it's such a tangible, real issue. Uh, yeah. and it's great to have you sort of addressing it. Yeah. So... Yeah, we don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of this. Uh, I, I think a fire is a great interoperable model. Uh, as far as data though goes, uh, that's where the semantics meet the road. <laughs> so uh, it's really all about, you know, are you using ICD-10 correctly or you got CPT-4 in there? So codable concepts and that sort of thing. Yeah, but, yeah. So the, yeah, harmonizing that that semantic is is really not going to be what we will focus on, that's for a larger, more clinical group, I think, but we will be using the same uh, coding solutions and, well, we'll, I think, be doing a little bit what sounds like the pivot in patient. And I'm really happy to hear that this has sort of moved away from uh, a supply chain donor milk, uh, which didn't really have anything to do with patients, uh, to something more about clinical trials and how people provide consent management to their data and all those other really great things, which are, are, are really how data is going to be shared, uh, not just in the blockchain, but how that's going to be made available by people to participate or to make their data available in anonymous and maybe not so anonymous ways. Anyway, uh, yeah, great, uh, great to hear that's happening. and we'll definitely try to bend a ear to more of those uh, more of those discussions. Okay. Well, excellent. Well, good. Uh, definitely uh, keep me posted. And then when we're ready to, when we're ready to launch, uh, I, I really expect uh, to, to see some really good uh, momentum here. So thanks again for your work uh, thus far and looking forward to the future. Okay. Uh, so let's do a, a pass on uh, a round on, uh, updates for our ad hoc teams. Um, and uh, generally speaking, ad hoc teams tend to tend to focus around topics of interest and they oftentimes kind of grow into those subgroups uh, that, that tend to meet more regularly. Um, so right now, and this is sort of an ongoing issue, uh, we're, we're always in sort of this, this sort of wiki redesign space. Uh, as most people know, we sort of moved from uh, an older wiki to Confluence, which is what we're looking at today. Uh, and uh, I'm always, always, uh, it seems to be a thing for me, uh, looking to find people that have expertise in, in confluence of uh, the, the wiki and sort of a general design uh, uh, sort of expertise as well. And so if, you, if anyone on the call uh, has, you know, that, that sort of understanding of how to use confluence and really enjoys design, uh, please let me know. Um, in fact, this issue is not uh, just for this SIG, but it tends to be something at a much broader level that we're talking uh, at, at a leadership level. And, and again, this is really an appeal to find a, a good resource to help uh, sync up all uh, SIGs and working groups so that we have sort of common look and feel. And the real value to that is so that members, uh, and again, we continue to have new, new members coming in. We, we are growing at a phenomenal rate. Uh, coming into the community, and so we're looking for a way to synchronize look and feel across all SIGs and all working groups. 
Um, and so, you know, this is just an ongoing uh, uh, issue. So if you happen to know anyone or you happen to be someone that has uh, interest in uh, design and have expertise with Confluence, please let me know. Okay, uh, moving forward. Uh, so the academic research team uh, led by Adrian Berg. Uh, I, I reached out to Adrian uh, earlier in the week uh, and he is uh, sort of on a quasi, uh, uh, oh gosh, not a vacation, but a, uh, just the, the word just left. Anyway, he's been out um, for the past um, uh, couple of months and so he's just getting back into the uh, swing of things. So I would imagine um, we'll be we'll be spinning up uh, the academic research team again when as Adrian gets on back online, but the gist of that is to develop um, some some expertise around uh, process for making uh, blockchain technologies more relevant within a healthcare context by way of peer re peer reviewed journals um, and uh, and and sort of aggregating some of the research that's been done thus far in this space. Uh, and to that, to that extent, uh, Wendy has done a great job uh, with uh, her um, sort of uh, research efforts in uh, sort of aggregating those white papers. Those are up on our wiki for those that are interested, a, a phenomenal resource. And, and thanks to, to Wendy for that. Um, and this is probably a good segue to move over to our use case development team, uh, which is being led by Wendy. Uh, and I see Wendy's on the call. So Wendy, you want to give us an update on where you're at with that? Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a quick update to something that um, Rich just mentioned. So the Frontiers in Science has created a new journal called um, Frontiers in Blockchain for Science that just kicked off today. I was named as uh, one of the associate editors, and so we believe that this is going to be a fantastic forum to advance academic research for blockchain. And um, so uh, keep looking for that journal, and uh, if anyone has a strong scientific and review background, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, going on to the use case development team, this has been slow gaining traction. Uh, we have four additional, well, five members of our team, and I see Patricia on the call. Thank you so much for participating in this use case group, and we're just waiting for one more team member to provide his availability in our doodle poll. And Ken, if you can give uh, Ray a little nudge, I would appreciate it because he's the last person we're waiting for. And it looks like we will schedule our first use case meeting for July 9th or 11th. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And, and as far as that, that sort of a uh, new academic research com component goes and the work that you're doing, congratulations on, uh, on your involvement in that. Uh, and if there's any way for us to help uh, facilitate uh, sort of that, that getting the information out to, to membership here, I'd be happy to do so. We can maybe uh, generate a, an email out to full membership if, if you think that's appropriate. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, the editor-in-chief, Sean Mannion, uh, sent out an email and LinkedIn post this morning, and so I can forward to you that information so that you have it. And yes, by all means, we would want the full membership to be aware that this is a fantastic new outlet for updating the academic literature. Outstanding. And this, this falls very closely in line with the academic research team that Adrian's been leading. Exactly. Yeah. And so we may want to find a way to pivot or to collaborate or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work those issues out. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. This is the, uh, very outstanding. And thanks so much for your efforts on this, uh, on the, in this area. This is really something that uh, we've, you know, we've talked about for a very long time. And so I'm happy to see all this stuff is sort of coming together. In, in large measure by your hand. So thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, I also wanted to give a shout out to um, Erica Bierbauer. She and I are also working on some academic literature with Kevin Clausen, and I am madly writing a paper um, to try to get it in for a publication deadline of July 22nd. And my primary focus is on regulatory compliance of uses for blockchain in clinical research, and it goes in depth into the OHRP FDA and HIPAA regulations on many different touch points relating to regulatory compliance. Outstanding. Oh, very cool. Very exciting. Interesting stuff, too. 
Uh, okay, well, thank you, Wendy. Uh, again, very, very uh, exciting area, and and again, a very high growth growth area. And I got to imagine that we've got an awful lot of folks in membership that would be interested in in uh, sort of being more enlightened in this space. And so, yeah, let's let's find a way to get the word out. Okay, uh, so so moving on. So we don't have any old business per se, uh, but I do have a couple of things that I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, and we do have a special report coming from Dennis. Um, but uh, so first off, and th this I just learned about uh, just a couple of days ago, and apologies for catching this kind of late in the cycle, but we do have uh, periodically, and for folks in the government space, uh, there are things called uh, what I refer to as SIBRs and SITRs, or SBIRs or STTRs. Uh, and those are really aimed at small businesses, and these are government grant opportunities and funding opportunities. Uh, STTRs are, oh gosh, Small Business Technology Transfer, rah, 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 I don't know what the R is, I forget. And SIBRs are, oh gosh, I can never remember that, but they're all aimed around small business. SIBRs, generally speaking, SBIRs, generally speaking, are for small businesses to, uh, to develop a solution standalone. Whereas an STTR, usually a small business will work with an academic institution and, and that collaborative effort is, is, uh, lends itself to the grant application. So in this particular instance, uh, we have a, a blockchain technology opportunity. This is through uh, the Department of Health and Human Services and it's in collaboration with NIH. Uh, and so I'll switch over to that. And so that's what we're looking at here. Uh, what's really wonderful about it is their, their program funding is a million dollars, which is phenomenal. The bad news is that the closing date is end of July. So uh, we're really catching this sort of in midstream here. And uh, so that gives uh, folks interested in participating in this about a month to, uh, to put something together. Uh, the, the high level of uh, value of this is for, for folks that are interested in participating in uh, substance abuse. Uh, that's what SUD care is about. Uh, and so if you have an interest or expertise in, in uh, substance abuse in the healthcare space, and uh, you have an idea about applying blockchain technologies to uh, substance abuse, this is really developed for you. Um, and again, I'd be happy to help facilitate. I'd be happy to put this out to full membership if you would like uh, to, to, to drive this or you have a team that you want to put together. Uh, again, we can do this uh, fairly easily. Uh, as far as uh, sibbers and sitters go, uh, I'm very familiar with uh, managing these. Um, we've done these uh, in, in, in government, military, and DOD. I, I've, I've done many, many of these uh, <laughs> over the years. Um, so, uh, so the mechanism uh, is pretty straightforward and it's just a question of uh, convening a team uh, sort of quick enough to be able to sort of answer that end of July uh, due date. And so, um, and I really haven't explored the details particularly. So my first question, of course, this being an international group is if you happen to be outside of the United States, uh, can you participate? And honestly, I, I really haven't uh, dug too far into it, but my suspicion is, uh, you, as, a, as a foreign entity, you probably could with some, I, I have to imagine, some exception. Anyway, so I, I'll leave this uh, to you. Uh, if anyone's interested, uh, feel free to contact me, and then we can, like I said, we can uh, make use of the resources within this special interest group to put to this if you have interest in, in driving this forward. Rich, can I can I ask again? I, I sure. didn't get everything, but I, I got that there was some kind of a proposal or, or a call for a, a founding announcement opportunity for substance abuse. Is that from NIDA, from the National Institute of Drug Abuse? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So if we take a look at, uh, so I'm going to jump over take a oh, look. Oh, it is in the wiki. Okay, I can look at it. Okay. Well, and, and the reason why I mentioned it is because you mentioned NIDA and I believe, uh, bup, bup, bup. yeah, so, uh, so, so it's, it's, it, it's actually interesting. It's HHS, it's also NIH, and then to your point, uh, and I, I, when I was reading this the other day, I noticed NIDA. So NIDA is in fact involved yes, in this as yes. well. Yes, okay. That's interesting because we wrote something um, that could apply, but this is, uh, thank you for pointing it out. I think it's a little bit late because when is the application deadline? Uh, end of July. 
Yeah, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah. and, and unfortunately, I just found out about this uh, literally two days ago. Uh, and so uh -huh. it's one of these things where, uh, boy, it'd be nice to, you know, to have the, the turnaround, especially with an STTR when you're working with an academic institution. Uh, it takes almost forever to get the, get through the approval process. And so my experience is uh, usually SIBRs, small business uh, uh, grant options, those are a lot easier to uh, operate against and, uh, because it's just you, your small business, uh, and then you can convene a team. Yeah, uh, SBAR would be best for this one. Yeah, yeah and, and it, it's possible, and again, I, I haven't gone too, too deep on this, it's possible that this particular grant opportunity uh, is dual, meaning that there is an STTR and then it branches as an SBIR as well. Uh, the, the company that I, uh, I heard this from, uh, I, I talked to them, we were doing a consulting thing, we, and I talked to them earlier this week. They were of the belief that this was also uh, released as an SBIR. So, but I, I didn't find that information, but they, they were of the belief that it was. So mm -hmm. the, real, the real issue, honestly, is that, uh, you know, you have to have something turn around uh, by end of month, July, which uh, it, this opened up, I want to say, in, in May, June timeframe. So these never seem to have a whole lot of time for you to operate against. Um, but uh, yeah, one month is difficult unless, you know, you as a, as a company are already sort of poised in this area and working in this area actively. So, right. So that's interesting. We are, and this would be fantastic. It would be a good fit with the project that I'm currently working on for the Uniform Services Family Health Plan, which consolidates data from six different health providers. Um, so yeah, I'll be in touch. Did you say this is a, you, you think this is a SIBR, but you only have the Sitter, uh, yeah, sitter right. Person. So, so uh, you know, Stephen, if, if I were you, I, I would probably drive this a little bit more. So the way that it was described to me, it was passed over to me, I want to say, uh, on Wednesday. I think my meeting was mm -hmm. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had, uh, they had asked if I could be, uh, I, if I could participate in this. And I said, well, you know, my read on this is this is an STTR, which means you have to have academic uh, involvement, which is honestly a headache unless, you know, you already have those relationships well established. Uh, and they went, oh gosh, uh, that's a problem. And then one of their uh, team members said, oh, it, but it appears to also be released as an SBIR as well as a SIBR. So if, but, but I didn't see any information to that effect in, in my due diligence, but it may exist out there. And so you may want to sort of drive that, that one to, to ground and yep. if it is a SIBR, yeah, that would be the way that I would act on this. Um, and, and again, uh, it, you know, it does have significant funding behind it. Uh, I was going to say, that's the, top of the, that's the top of the bar for SIBRs. E yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. There, there is, there is an um, SBAR, you call it SIBR? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and I've been, I've been told. There, so. there, is, there is one, I just found it. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Uh, if you can put it up on chat uh, through the chat window. Uh, uh, Stephen, can you, can you grab that out of the chat window? Or Patricius, can you send it over to Stephen? Then we'll get that into the notes. Yep. Uh, yep. We'll, we'll publish that. Uh, and I'll push, push that back to this, this agenda through our notes. Um, so Sibber, yeah, absolutely. A Sibber would be much, much easier to respond to, especially given the short time frame. And, and you're absolutely correct, Stephen, that it is a high ticket item. And so that's what caught, uh, caught our interest initially. Thanks. I need to ring off. I've got the link from Ms. Buendia. Muchas gracias. And uh, I'll pass you over the notes when I, when I finish cleaning them up. OK. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And thank you, Patricia. Okay, uh, so moving on. So uh, the, really, the rest of the time I want to put to Dennis. Dennis was uh, recently attended the the Hims conference in Finland. So boy, I tell you, what an opportunity. So uh, so Dennis, do you want to talk a little bit about your your experience at the Hims conference? Yeah, with pleasure. Um, as I told to Rich that I'm going to uh, attend uh, his conference in Helsinki, he kindly proposed uh, to have me the presence of Hyperledger. Um, just a few information. This is the second HIMSS conference in Europe. And the participants was around 2,000 people. 
in comparison to Orlando, 42,000 people. So it was much uh, smaller scale. And uh, especially uh, because of the uh, location, uh, it was very much dominated with the Scandinavian uh, organizations. That has uh, one uh, good and one bad thing. The bad thing is uh, it doesn't re it didn't really represent the whole Europe. Uh, for example, Switzerland. Uh, in Zouk, uh, Ethereum is coming, and there are almost 300 uh, different startups, and uh, almost 20 percent is in healthcare, in Geneva, etc. And in Holland, there are also many others. Uh, but the good thing is uh, Finland is the best uh, EHR integrated nation uh, in the world. And I had also the opportunity to know uh, more about the whole uh, initiative. And that was my uh, main objective uh, attending to the uh, conference. And uh, I just open. So, the Finnish healthcare system has a portal for uh, any citizen who is uh, over uh, 18. And uh, the name is mykanta.com. Uh, uh, and the users can access their prescriptions, health, and well being data, manage their living wills, organ donation wills, manage access to their data using consents and restrictions, uh, browse logs about access to your data, act on behalf of a child aged under 10, and manage their personal healthcare uh, record data. So, and it is used almost uh, uh, 2.5 million of uh, users which makes the half of the population of uh, Finland. So it, <laughs> there is no uh, big discussion about interoperability in Finland. And uh, on the other side, uh, there are also patients traveling to Estonia on the other side of the sea. And they want to also integrate uh, Estonia uh, the, with, with their, uh, with their uh, healthcare system with their uh, EHR system in order to took uh, all these things uh, in record and consolidating uh, and for the use of different purposes. So it's very much GDPR compliant, it's very much patient driven and it's very much interoperable. Um, the thing is, how do they realize that is the uh, controversial thing because uh, they uh, realize it very much central planned and uh, driven. And uh, also uh, it took almost 30 years to come to that point. I had the opportunity uh, discussing with the uh, system architect, with the managers. Uh, they really want to improve the whole system uh, also in the regional uh, level, uh, they started uh, with uh, uh, predictions, with the uh, AI uh, implementations. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a miracle in comparison to Switzerland. And uh, because in Switzerland, uh, there is an initiative for the EHR, uh, standardization, standardization of the EHR, which is not really running because of different political discussions almost in the last five, six years. So it was a big uh, good practice uh, uh, experience, uh, touch and feel uh, in Helsinki. And I also organized uh, for uh, hyperledger uh, six different meetings in order to present uh, the, uh, the fra frameworks and uh, also the initiative and uh, it was very useful because blockchain was not really very much present in that uh, conference very much like uh, which reflected uh, the 2018 it was correct which 
in uh, in Hims uh, global in in US, it was almost the same uh, situation. And uh, the thing is, there were uh, two sessions about blockchain, and it was uh, not really uh, deep uh, discussed and presented. And uh, I think uh, there will be lots of opportunities uh, if uh, we can uh, organize in the future in healthcare uh, events and conferences, Hyperledger will be present. And uh, another information uh, for the key challenges for blockchain in healthcare in Europe is very much the lack of uh, house skills and insufficient user knowledge. I can also send these presentations to you guys if you want to uh, uh, have more uh, deeper uh, understanding. And which vendors for blockchain technology in the healthcare ecosystem do you know of? 76% uh, uh, doesn't know any vendor or any, any, any framework in blockchain uh, in healthcare in Europe. So there is a big uh, potential and opportunity uh, to, to, to contact with people, with people and to inform people about the opportunities of hyperledger and what we are doing in the future in order to uh, get also the commitment and support. So it is almost three to uh, five. Um, I can also talk uh, longer, but I don't want to take your time. Uh, if you have uh, further questions, you can write me and uh, I will uh, come back to you with pleasure. Excellent. Thank you, Dennis. And so, yeah, if you can send that information over, uh, we can put it uh, either out, uh, out on the wiki, which I think is where we'd want to put it, and I can also send it along to full membership if you think it's appropriate. But absolutely, please send that information over. Uh, and that would be uh, that would be useful. Uh, and and thanks so much for your summary, boy. It's very interesting to hear that blockchain technologies are not necessarily uh, fully considered yet uh, in the healthcare space uh, in Europe. And I think yeah, maybe maybe they they're just simply lagging uh, maybe a year in in this in the healthcare space which is interesting because uh, in, in a lot of respects, uh, Switzerland tends to be sort of a, a central point for much of what happens uh, as far as blockchain te technologies go, uh, at least in the FinTech space and so in, in financial industry. And so maybe that's the, the disparity that we see here. Exactly. But uh, thank you uh, for your support with, uh, with uh, different uh, informations, uh, information uh, before I travel. Rich and David Boswell was also very much supporting. Thank you. Good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that we were able to get uh, Hyperledger uh, support uh, behind uh, your visit. So excellent. Well, good. Thank you, Dennis. All righty. Well, so uh, we're coming up to the very top of the hour. Uh, any other last comments or thoughts before we close out for the week? So our uh, next meeting is scheduled for July 12th, which is two weeks from today. Uh, same time, seven o'clock Pacific time. And uh, if uh, we have no other comments or thoughts, uh, we'll close out and I, I'll wish you all a great weekend. Thanks everybody. Thank you, likewise. Thank you.